Matt, was there a moment in your life where you knew you wanted to be a filmmaker? There wasn't one exact moment in my life when I realized, oh, this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. It was sort of a culmination of events and experiences. Uh, going through college, like many people, you're trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to do? Uh, what am I good at? Um, how can I put myself to, you know, put my talents to, to best use? And it was one of those things where, you know, I took a screenwriting class, I took a introduction to film class, and started kind of looking back at my life and some of the things that I did and my own writing, my own, uh, you know, talents and things that I was interested in. And, and I realized, oh, okay, this is kind of interesting. Maybe this is somewhere that I can actually, you know, make a career out of it. You know, this is like, I didn't even think about, oh, you can actually make a career as a writer, as a director. And once that started hitting, it became sort of like, I'm sure for many people, an obsession and, you know, just constantly just immersing myself in the world of filmmaking as much as possible, learning, uh, practicing, and kind of taking that journey to, you know, becoming a filmmaker. When you told your parents that you wanted to be a filmmaker, what were their thoughts on that? When I told my parents that I was interested in being a director, they definitely were kind of like, wait, is that a real job? <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, they were kind of curious, can you make a career out of this? Can you make a living off of this? Like, how is this possible? Uh, and, you know, once, you, once I went to film school, they started seeing my projects. They noticed that, oh, okay, so this is, this is what you do. Because I come from a background where, you know, my dad's an engineer, my mom was a nurse, very sort of practical uh, career choices. So when they kind of, you know, when they finally saw that, oh, you can actually, you get paid to, to write and direct movies, like, okay, that seems cool, that seems fun. And then it was funny is for years, I was directing features like independent films and you know, doing writing assignments and scripts. And they were always like, oh yeah, you know, you're a director. Yeah, that's, that's cool. But um, I never worked with really huge big name talent before. So finally this year when I, it's funny, I finally worked with uh, Bruce Willis on a, a couple movies. And when I, my dad found out, he's like, Bruce Will, like John McClane. I'm like, yeah, yeah. John. And he's like, oh, now he's like, okay, so you made it. You made it as a director. And I was like, yeah, I was kind of there for the last, you know, few years, but you know, it's just now that, you know, they see it, so it's kind of cool. Was that important to them to have their sort of blessing and not go into law or medicine or become I an I think no matter what I would have done, the good thing is my parents definitely were supportive of that. They helped me out a lot. They kind of, you know, they were there for me when I needed them and there was these, because the thing is in your career, you're always going through ups and downs, no matter what, especially towards success. It's never a straight line upward. There's always those, those little breaks and then a bigger break and then a stumble and then you sell a script and then you think you're going to be on set and then the financing falls through and then you get another movie greenlit, but then it doesn't turn out the way you thought and you thought it was going to get into Sundance and it didn't get into Sundance and then now it's just released on some VOD platform and you're like, okay, well, okay, that was an interesting learning lesson. Let's go on to the next project. So, you know, and through that, I don't think you could survive as a filmmaker unless you have that sort of like friends, family, parents who are helping you and kind of helping push you and promote you and, and being there to motivate you. Do you like that challenge? But some people, they want sort of this roadmap that's just, they know like point A is going to lead to point B. But I think some people like puzzles and they like to be able to figure things out, especially if something's I mean, almost like you can't do it, you know? Look, I mean, it, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, if I hit the lottery, to, you know, when I was, you know, a young filmmaker and, you know, you could get discovered and you did an amazing short film. And then next thing you know, you're on a big budget studio film. And then, you know, because that that happens, right? That does happen where, you know, you get discovered quickly off of a short or a script. And then six months later, you're on set shooting it. And then next thing you know, you're a studio filmmaker. And that does happen. So it's there. But at the same time, you have to realize that, that those sort of exceptional stories aren't exactly what is gonna to happen to you. So you have to kind of gear yourself and prepare yourself for, yeah, it'd be cool if it happens, but shoot a, a short or write a cool script and you know it propels forward in an interesting way. But if not, you're gonna to have to grind. You're gonna to have to keep doing it. You're gonna to have to keep shooting, keep writing, 
keep producing, keep getting yourself out there. And that's a part of the process is that persistence. You have to be persistent. I mean, that's the one thing that I've seen in my career as a filmmaker and as a director is the ones that are persistent, even after failure, even after a little success or even after a big success, they stay at it. They just keep going. They keep trying, pick themselves up, up and do it again, try again. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, wait, it's been a few years now. I'm on set doing another movie. Like, you know what I mean? So that's what you have to do. You have to keep motivated and keep persistent.